Okay, well, welcome everybody to part five of Selling in a Time of Uncertainty. Uh, please don't let those stormy clouds on the screen scare you in any way, shape, or form. You know, um, if I say again, fluid times, I think I'm sick of the word fluid and I want to remove it from my vocabulary. But these are very fluid times, and I don't know, but the last 24 hours are starting to feel a little bit like perhaps we're getting over the hump of the rainbow and going to the other side, um, and that's coming from a girl that's residing in New Jersey. Uh, but welcome to the call. Uh, I ask that you please uh, put some questions in the chat as we're going through this. I will address those to our panelists. And uh, to get started, I should introduce myself. This is Kelly Zuccarelli. I have been your moderator for four of the five weeks. I apologize for having to had bail on you at the last minute last week. But uh, I am Senior Vice President, National Builder Condo Program Manager at Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. And you can see my email there if you have any mortgage-related questions uh, after this uh, webinar. I'm happy to help you. I am joined by a phenomenal group of beautiful women inside and out. I would like to start with uh, Janice and Janice has been working in the home building industry for over 18 years. After graduating from college, she spent the first half of her career as an on -sales, online sales and marketing representative for two large home builders in the Philadelphia area, mm -hmm. home girl. After returning to her hometown of State College, PA in 2011, are you aware that I am a major Penn State fan? Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you see this, Janice? That's awesome. Go Penn we State. We are. <laughs> anyway, sorry, guys. I, I, uh, I got too excited there as I was reading this. Um, after returning to State College, Janice joined SNA Homes as an online sales representative and helped launch the current online sales program. In addition to Janice, we're joined by the ever-present and ever-beautiful Carol Morgan, most of you know Carol at this point. She's the founder of Denim Marketing. Carol is uh, not only founder, but president, and it's a woman-owned agency specializing in strategic marketing and media relations, blogging, social media, promotions, advertising, and much more. Carol is also a past NEHB PWB chair and past membership chair and current second vice chair of associates. Thank you for all that you do for NAHB, Carol. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. And next we have Leah Fellows. Leah is the founder and owner of Blue Gypsy Inc. As a national online sales counselor trainer working for builders across the country. Uh, she'd been in the building industry for 14 years. And prior to that, she spent 13 years traveling around the world as a sailboat captain, dive instructor, and backpacker. Ugh, you just made me feel bad about myself, Leah. No, just kidding. All right, and then finally, we have Kimberly Mackey. She was the, uh, she's the brains behind this whole thing. This was her idea, and here we are today, five weeks later. Kimberly is the founder and sales and marketing management consultant at New Home Solutions Consulting. Kimberly is the, uh, is a sales and man marketing management consultant, speaker, and trainer. I apologize, my tongue got tied. She is the vice chair of the National Sales and Marketing Council and the past president of the Floridian Sales and Marketing Council. Uh, I guess I should have said that I'm chair of NEHB's NSMC, and I get to work very closely with Kimberly and enjoy every minute of it. So ladies, uh, this, this week is jam packed with lots of information and I talked a little bit about it feels like it's getting better the mood is changing there's a little bit of energy I don't know if it's energy or just pent up demand to do something but it does feel a little bit different this Friday and hopefully we can all gain some energy from that and head into the future um, looking at it far more brightly. And you know, not just brightly, but differently. 
because we've learned so much about technology and about how to do business. I don't think, in my opinion, it's a good idea if we open up again and go back to doing things the way we used to. I think it's critically important that we embrace some of the change we were forced to embrace and find a way to work it into our go forward strategy. So I am going to turn it over to the brains of this meeting. And I believe I'm turning it right over to Carol to get started. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I think the mood is changing. There's definitely optimism out there. I heard this week that Ohio is reopening on May 1st. I don't think we know what that looks like yet, but I know that there's six other states also talking about, you know, plans to reopen and another 20 that they say are going to open. So I think May is definitely going to look up. And as far as the future and how this has changed us, technology is just not going to go away. We've all talked about technology a lot. Um, we're using technology obviously today and I think everyone's become much more adept at all these uh, virtual meetings. But I think also in the future that our buyers are going to expect virtual tours and they're going to expect more video. Um, I think it's going to become just like they expect granite in all of your homes now. So if you haven't started thinking about adding virtual tours, even if you're just adding what we call virtual light, the Matterport, you know, dollhouse tours versus the full scale, you know, more expensive ones, start looking to budget that for later this year or for next year, if that's the soonest you can do it, because buyers are going to be looking for those. I'm going to turn it back to Kimberly for her comments. So absolutely, I definitely am sensing a change and my, the companies that I'm working with, you know, all of a sudden people are talking about recovery and I, I'm just so excited to actually hear the recovery word from people. So, you know, I think we still have some work to do to get everybody on board and starting to look at that. But when even Dr. Fauci is, is cracking jokes on the morning shows, I mean, I, you know, I can't even imagine what that poor man has been through these past few months and the weight that's been on his shoulder to get this thing right, you know? So I think that's very encouraging. And it is, it is nice to, to see that. I think we feel like maybe we it didn't, it wasn't as bad as we expected it to be. Not that it couldn't go back to, to you know, and, and be, be drug out with people not taking it seriously. So I'm certainly not suggesting that, but I definitely feel a change in the mood. Um, so there is a little bit of optimism out there. And uh, I, think, I think we can catapult that forward uh, if we all collectively form that energy and start, uh, start taking action right now. So how about you, Leah? What are you seeing? Well, you know, I'm all about energy. So I'm always about energy, always talking about energy. And I like to find the bright spots in the darkness. And it's been a great week in the sense that I've talked to a lot of my online sales counselors, past and present, that I've trained. And I've gotten a lot of interesting feedback about their traffic, their leads being up, all sorts of things. And that people are starting to kind of embrace this new normal. So maybe they were a little bit shell-shocked in the beginning and a little quiet. But now with the leads coming in more, they're seeing more activity. So I feel like, you know, we just have to keep looking for those bright spots in the darkness and that so many people are coming together to help each other in the industry, you know? And I think that, that the fact that we continue to be here for each other is important. Um, I mean, I've been spending a lot of my time every day on free uh, consultations with people from real estate agents to builders to people in our industry, just trying to come up and brainstorm ideas of how we can get through this. And I think we're starting to see that just like that highway, the clouds are starting to part and with all these things coming along. Just the fact that we're learning, like Kelly said, learning new ways to do it. We need to keep that stuff online and in and doing those things as we move forward so that we can handle whatever might come if we have some ups and downs and some little little turns as, as we recover here, so. Yeah, and I, and I agree with what uh, Leah just said about uh, from a home builder perspective here in Pennsylvania, definitely seeing a shift in mood. Um, everyone's staying very positive. I do think we're all seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we've seen a definite increase in traffic and the amount of leads that have been coming in just within the last couple of weeks. So definitely feeling good about everything. And I have some show and tell to go with this one. So I'm, um, 
clicking on um, the chat and adding a blog post so that you guys can go look and look at um, some visuals as I talk through this if you want. I just did a blog on some really cool things that I see happening around the country and I called the blog I wrote Creativity Leads because the one thing that I have really seen is that builders and their marketing teams are getting incredibly creative during this and finding really fun things to do and fun ways to share. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick roundup starting with the Providence Group. They've been sharing sharing posts on their Facebook page featuring team members with popular hashtags like, you know, with me, with you. Both of those are trending. With you is trending on Twitter and with me is trending on Google right now. Um, and they have just some very fun posts. There's one where they all, the, um, the, the interior designers made face masks and you can see in the post, it's probably a few days ago, so you may have to scroll a little on their Facebook page, but they have their masks on and even one of them put one on one of their pets. So it's a really cute post. Um, so their staff's being encouraged to share photos of kids doing schoolwork, um, you know, the parents helping them with their schoolwork, the kids' daily schedules, family pets, date nights, you know, all of those things. Then the other thing the Providence Group has done is created this series of uh, branded YouTube videos that they're sharing to social that promote private tours, video tours, and historically low interest rates. And those are super creative as well. Then Artisan Built Communities recently introduced its Breathe Freely package, and that's designed to promote healthy living in every new home it builds. And so for a limited time, they're offering this as a standard in every home they build. It includes, you know, a, um, a filtration system, a pure air filtration system, a low VOC, you know, shawl floor score certified flooring and Sherman Williams paints, um, a passive radon system, um, low LVP, um, you know, low VLC LVP flooring in the great room, and then also some money toward closing cost. And, and I thought that was a pretty creative way to um, position themselves as people are more and more worried about, you know, viruses and bacteria and particles in the air and allergens. So that's kind of fun. Um, not going to completely steal the thunder on S and Eggs. I know we've got Janice here today, but they've done a fantastic job of promoting their virtual tours and services on their social media and blog. Um, they posted a video on Facebook about one of their uh, sales representatives demonstrating a floor plan just to show people what it was like to attend a virtual appointment. And I think that's so important because people can't really visualize what that's going to be like. So that was fun. Um, and then uh, we'll move on to interior design firm Crosby Design Group recently hosted a virtual family Easter egg hunt for their staff. I thought that was fun. They put that on their Facebook page. It's a great way to keep staff engaged and connected and make them feel like they're part of what's going on and really part of the team, although we're all in different places. Um, and then just a couple of more. I thought this one was fun. Kuiper Homes um, is focusing on Take a Tour Tuesday and other methods of promoting their virtual tours and properties on their social media. Um, a fun one here in Atlanta, Triton Homes is running a Cyber Spring campaign and they're promoting all the homes that are ready to close by the end of May. And home shoppers are encouraged to schedule an online appointment to tour these homes either privately or virtually. So we're lucky, we're lucky in Atlanta that we can still do one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, then the next thing that Triton's gonna roll out, I thought was really cool. They're gonna have six new model homes opening between now and probably the 1st of June. So they're gonna host a virtual tour of homes in June where home buyers can tour all these homes on their website, YouTube, Facebook, or Pinterest pages. And I thought that was a really creative idea. And then there's a few more in my blog post that you all can go visit, but I can't use more than my fair share of time. So I'm gonna hand this over to Kimberly for a few ideas. So thanks, Carol. I think that's one of the best things I think is coming out of this uh, is that people are getting creative for the longest time, we've been saying stop just posting pictures of your, of the elevations of your houses and telling people to come out on your social media. You know, it's not an MLS feed, you know, you've, or, or your website. You've got to get interactive. And for once, I mean, we're really starting to see all these really great ideas come out of it. So um, one of the, the most fun ideas that uh, one of my builders had, Vitaly Homes here in the Tampa market, is he's Italian. He's 
not even, he, he literally came over and got married to someone from here and started up a building company. So he still has his Italian accent. He's got ob obviously all of his family from Italy. So we, he, and he's been making pizzas and he's been making Italian, an Italian garden with his kids. And I'm like, wait, this is, this is gold right here. So put that stuff on video. So now I'm starting to get all these videos that he's sending me so that we can, um, we can target those. And of course it ties right into family and home and, you know, I mean, you, any of those feelings of security right now. And, and of course ties into the Vitali Homes brand. So uh, another one of my builders is, uh, I think I may have, have mentioned this one last week. This is Bear Homes up in Wisconsin and they were, um, uh, it's Vitali, V-I-T-A-L-I-E. That's what Jay's asking about. So um, and then Candace is asking us to share our screen. So I'm not sure, Candace, if you can't see our, our slide deck. So let us know what you're not seeing on that one. Um, but uh, Bear Homes has a, has a salesperson who's into collecting memorabilia. So one of the things that uh, we brainstormed was to get with one of his collectors uh, who owns the store, owns a, you know, the memorabilia store, and bring that person in and do a virtual um, educational session about memorabilia and about all of those things. Um, and then we could showcase, of course, in front of our, we have this beautiful built-in bookcases around a fireplace. Um, so we have the fire going, we have this guy talking, we have some of the memorabilia sitting out. Again, anything that you can do that people can uh, use as a Facebook Live and they can interact with you, it's really cool. Uh, to be able to do that. So only see, yeah, that's what you're supposed to see. So, okay. I, we needed more than a map, Carol. We didn't do it right. So I'm going to throw it back to you though, because you have some great blog content ideas. I know. I wish we had more time to build these PowerPoints, but between helping builders around the country and working on these PowerPoints and um, everything else we're doing, it's hard to do all the examples we'd like to share. Um, I did just add another link in the chat, and this is a link to over 50 ideas for blogs and social media content. But I wanted to share one of the most fun ones that I've seen in a while. It's a builder here in Atlanta, SR Homes. They created a Together at Home blog series, and that's to connect with their homeowners, you know, buyers, um, to give them ideas of things to do at home. So the series features education, fitness, and entertainment so far, and they've got these really, really cute um, you know, graphics that go with it. It's a, it's a house with a heart in the center, and if you go to my blog post, um, you'll see it. And they've covered ways to keep education fun for the entire family, which I know lots of people are struggling with right now, because, you know, we're not all educators, but we're getting the pleasure of educating our children at home. Again, I say I'm lucky my child is 21, and he's uh, homeschooling college here, so he doesn't need me to help him and stay on top of him and teach him how to do math, thank goodness. So they're covering, uh, Know, education topics, creative art projects, which is always fun, and then suggestions for working out while at home. And then, you know, again, their graphics tie this all together with different color codes based on what the subject is. So I just love that. Um, then I have a bazillion other fun topics uh, that you could cover in your blog. You know, how home is the new coffee shop. Set up a coffee station at your home. You know, show somebody what to do. You know, we're all used to all the cool, neat things that we can do from home. And I think sometimes being this industry causes us to be a little OCD. I know I come home or walk in the big do back door of my house and I want everything to be clean and perfect. And then I look at everything that's wrong and why don't I have a charging station? And why isn't my kitchen perfectly organized? And all of those things that, you know, we see on a daily basis in model homes, you can blog about all of those. Everybody wants that. You know, defining a space for homeschooling. How can you do that? Setting up your home office, you know, tips for connectivity and productivity. A home movie theater, you know, how to turn that basement into a home movie theater. Energy savings tips. With everyone at home, we're all using more energy. So sharing all those things we already know. Then things to do, you know, game nights, exploring the great outdoors with your kids, digging for worms, 
um, you know, learn something new, learn a language, learn to knit, you know, give them resources for where to find those things. And gardening, we've touched on this, Kimberly just touched on it, it is huge right now. I don't know if you guys have seen the statistics, but it is out the roof. Everyone's starting a home garden. I'm getting emails about it all the time, you know, whether you're calling it a victory garden or a recovery garden. I've heard a resurgence garden was the other one I've heard. You know, telling people how to plant tomatoes in containers if, you know, all they've got is a back patio or, you know, how to start that small garden and what the best things to put in it for your area are and, you know, how soon can you put all of that outdoors. Um, you know, even just curb appeal for spring. Technology, I feel like we've talked so, so much about technology, but with with me and with you trending, doing videos that are things that you can do with me, you know, cook with me, garden with me, um, you know, mortgage, finances, all of those things people are interested in. I literally, um, I think maybe I told you guys last week, I have a staff member selling her house and buying a house in the middle of this just because it was such a great opportunity for them as it related to mortgage rates. You know, talk about that. Let people know, you know, if they still are employed and have a good credit score, it is a great time to buy. Um, they even looked at refinancing. And then corporate social responsibility. Obviously, whatever you are doing to give back and support the local community, you should be talking about on your blog, you know, whether that's thanking essential workers or thanking individual people within your company who are giving back, whatever you can talk about, um, you know, mental health tips, contest promotions and other fun. And boy, have I seen some fun stuff this week. Um, I actually saw a house plan where somebody had labeled the different parts of the house as, you know, stress-free zone, you know, yoga workout studio, you know, and, and I don't remember where they labeled the kitchen at, but it was, it was really fun. They had like relabeled the parts of the house to reflect the, the different things going on in our lives right now. Um, so, you know, fitness, your corporate messaging, um, Triton Homes here in Atlanta developed a video talking about how they've been in business for almost 50 years. Um, and the first one they did, they just took pictures and made those move, but just really trying to instill that credibility and trustworthiness and longevity and how they're going to continue to be here. So anything like that that you can do, highlighting your employees. There's lots of ideas out there. And we'd love to hear your ideas as well. So feel free to share. Um, and I know Leah has some more ideas on this. So I'm going to hand it off to Leah. Leah, you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I thought I hit the button. There you go. Uh, those were all such great ideas for content and marketing. And I want to actually move into scalability because every week we talk about all these amazing things that different builders can do. And so we get a lot of feedback sometimes that that's just not scalable for the smaller builders. And, you know, uh, I've been in the industry for 14 years. And I think everybody has a different idea of what a small builder is even. So if there's builders out there today, we have many people on this call, shout out about how many homes you start or you do each, each year. Because some people think of small builders as builders who only maybe build between, you know, 45 to, to 50 homes a year. We've got somebody saying 90. A lot of people feel like they're small if they're building 90. We've got 50. I know Janice earlier today, she said they build 150 and considers herself small. So two to four homes, lots of remodels. Okay, so that's a definite different size than the 30 to 40. We've got 10 to 14. This is really giving me some great information about you all and who's on here so that we can speak a little bit more to how we can scale some of these ideas to you, not just online, but marketing. Um, we've got 50 right there. So, so if we look at it, you know, I really feel like a lot of builders think they're small because they're not the big nationals. They're not building thousands and thousands of homes, but yet a lot of builders I work with start in that anywhere from 35 to 75 homes a year, and I can help them figure out how to implement an online sales program that works within their structure. Um, you know, a lot of the builders, so I spoke with a lot of my online sales counselors this week, anywhere from 35 to almost 300 homes a year. 
and they've given me some insight into what things are looking like for them, what they're doing. And I think some of the things they're doing can even apply to those 10 to 14 or more. Two to four homes with lots of remodels. I think that's a whole nother topic we'd have to talk about on how to help you. But um, here, any suggestions on reaching out to our folks who are downsizing? Many are technolog technologically challenged. Let's talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about scalability first of, of just all these marketing ideas and online sales program in general. Um, like Janice, who is actually the, she's the head of her online sales program and a market, her marketing department. She started out as an online sales counselor and she fills in for her OSC now, but she mainly looks at marketing. I've got a lot of other online sales counselors for small builders who actually pair up online and marketing together. Now, this is important that, you know, at the size of Janice, who thinks she's small, you know, 150, that she's not the full-time online sales counselor. That just wouldn't work, okay? But, and Janice, would you agree with me? We were talking about how online sales goes hand in hand, and if you can give me a little bit more of how that goes hand in hand with marketing so we can talk about this all together, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, the, the success of my marketing campaigns, I, I measure that based on how online sales is doing. So if I'm running a marketing campaign, I'm tracking how many leads we're getting from that marketing campaign, um, how many appointments we're getting, and there are certain metrics that, I, that I'm looking for. So the, the two definitely go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things to understand is in order to even have online sales, you have to have that foundation. You have to have a website. Like if you're a builder in this industry and you don't have a website, that's not something that's not scalable. It's just something that you haven't gotten to that yet. And they don't have to be those tens of thousands of dollars websites. You can find inexpensive websites to be able to implement. You have to have a CRM system. Everybody, no matter what size they are, should have a CRM because you, whether you have inside sales agents or outside sales agents, those leads should filter to you so you know how things are going. You know, if you're directing all your leads, I know a lot of you smaller builders out there, especially those who have 20 or 25 builds you do a year, you have outside sales agents, meaning you have brokers who list your your, your homes and sit in your models, okay? So you don't have your inside sales team yet. But what I also see is that builders force their leads out to those people and they have no accountability or understanding of where those leads are going and how many they're getting and how well they're converting. And so then when you ask them about numbers, they don't even know. So that CRM is essential that that comes in and the builder has oversight over that. You can see all the leads. And then from there, they go to your inside or outside salespeople, right? Even if you don't have an online sales counselor, because then you can start tracking your digital marketing and all these amazing things that Carol was talking about, all the digital marketing efforts you're putting forth should be driving all that traffic to that website you have. And, and you can track all of that, whether you are a builder building 10 homes a year, 100, 200, a th the ones that build a thousand, you can be darn sure that that's what they're looking at, okay? So you want to be a small builder with a big builder mentality. How are you going to get there? Especially if, A, you want to continue to, to thrive in any environment, like the current environment, or if you want to grow in the future, you need to set these things out uh, um, as your foundation. So uh, and I know there's some questions coming in, but there's a couple points I want to I want to make because this week I got to talk to some of my OSCs and they're feeling, like I said, very optimistic. Some of them, you know, they're they're seeing an explosion of leads. They can't even handle them. And that means their marketing is really dialed in well. OK, and so um, let's kind of talk a little bit more about um, how you even audit that stuff. Um, where you know leads and are coming in and you want to audit your leads and see what your traffic is and you can go ahead and switch Kimberly to the next to the lead audit and what we would do as an online sales counselor because this is part of our scalability. First you have to have those three things in place that I talked about a website 
uh, a CRM system and your marketing dialed in. And then you want to audit that process. You want to start digging into your numbers. And I'm going to throw this a little bit to Janice so you can hear it in her voice because we had a great conversation about this yesterday because we're both analytic nuts, right? <laughs> yes. So, so tell me a little bit about that. Um, well, I like to look at conversion rates. So I look at, I, I start at the top. I look at what is our website traffic? What percentage of that traffic is converting uh, to a lead? Um, what percentage of those leads are converting to appointments held and, and then down from there? And just to give you an idea, our online sales program right now, um, online leads are making up 60% of our company sales. Um, so that's a big one that we look at. What percentage of the overall company sales are we, uh, are we making up for the company? That's awesome. And 60%. So I have online sales counselors that represent like the whole gamut from like, like 30% to 50% or more. And even the ones that represent 50%, I know they could do more if they had a team, you know, yeah. they need two people, but it's just one person right now. And I would say that um, doing those audits, not just tracking it for your percentages to see how your online sales program is performing, but looking at how those leads are coming in, where they're going, um, what, what sort of um, tools are driving those leads, where people are spending their time. And you can see all of this in Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. So that's part of auditing your whole lead program is looking at how, how that's happening. But then from, from there, you can also, and, and any builder who has a website should be hooked up to Google Analytics. If you're hooked up to Google Analytics, you should have targets set. Are they targets or are they goals? Targets or goals, uh, Carol? I know, I forget, um, they're either targets or goals. But you should set that up on all of, your, um, all of your forms that people fill out so you can see how many leads are coming in. It, it's just not, it's not difficult to do. It's not, oh my God, I'm so small, I can't do this, okay? Everyone should be able to, and it's not gonna cost you a fortune to hook up your website to Google Analytics and set these things up. Um, so, so those are all things I really kind of wanted to cover today because I don't want you smaller builders to feel like you have no options and that you can't do this. And once you get the foundation set up, you can have people who deal with your incoming leads like an online sales counselor. Maybe if you're small, like 40 or 30, you're not gonna have them be, be that be their only job. Like one of my favorite builders I work with who they have stayed ahead of this curve. I mean, she saw this coming. She's their marketing person and their online sales counselor. She saw this coming. They went out and ordered enter now locks. In the last week, they've made two sales of the 50 they plan to make this year, just from their enter now locks last week. They have seen a 45% increase in their website traffic because they're tracking this stuff and they're looking at everything in the last two weeks. And she says it's 10% up over February where they were going like gangbusters. So knowing that you can set all this stuff up to see is super important. Now, I don't, I don't want to take up much more time because I know I, I get passionate, I get rambly about this, and I want to turn it over <laughs> to, to Kimberly for some thoughts on, on um, enlisting your sales team, but I, I really get fired up over this stuff. If you want to talk to me, feel free. Like I said, I've been doing everything for free anyway. So. So yeah, enlisting your sales team and lighting a fire under them, I will tell you, it's interesting. As I talk to my builders and, and management teams, I'm seeing optimism. I'm seeing some energy coming back and I'm seeing people that are reading the tea leaves and going, okay, yes, we're going to get through this thing. But I have to tell you, the sales teams that I'm working with right now, honestly, look like deers in the headlights. They are, they just have, they're, they're a fish out of water. They don't know what to do right now. And if you are not engaging them every step of the way, they are really feeling very disconnected from what's happening in the main, with the main group, with the, with the core management team. We're so used to our sales teams being out there in our model centers and out in the field that we forget to bring them in and include them in so much of this right now. And you really need to think about that enlist them to help you. They have some great ideas, 
but they're just not feeling like anybody's listening to them and they feel a little bit like they, they can't do stuff, uh, that they're, they're not empowered to do things. So do empower them and you will see your sales take off for sure. So one of the things that I've been talking to all of my teams about this week is don't confuse today's sales with creating new demand. Uh, as I've um, been talking to salespeople around the country, when I'm looking at the sales that they're making, and yes, they're selling homes, but what they're selling is from their pipeline of prospects. They're really not working new leads, depending on where they are, even in places where we can still have face-to-face -face meetings, the, you know, the traffic has just, the physical traffic has just completely dropped off. So understand that, that there are those people, those salespeople who are continually nurturing their pipeline, those are the ones who are continuing to sell. But we know that eventually we're gonna burn through that or we're gonna have too many people who are just sitting and waiting uh, that you have got to be continually putting in those new leads and you need your sales team to be doing that. Um, one of the things, you know, I am having salespeople go back, call their database, check in with people, be real, get human with them. But I'm also checking in with my sales team every week to see who they've called. And we're looking at our CRMs and we're going through our list, not only of our opportunities or hot deals uh, and those people as they're moving through the process, but we're also going back through their contacts and we're looking at those, those prospects. Where are they? When's the last time they've been touched? We're looking at the life of the lead and I'm holding my salespeople accountable because you do not get what you expect. I have so many, um, division presidents and, and owners of, of companies who say to me, I don't have time to babysit these people. What do you mean? You know, they're not going back and they're not just doing, well, they're not. I'm sorry. It's just a fact of life. But holding people accountable doesn't mean that you're being heavy handed. It doesn't mean that you're micromanaging them. It means that you are supporting them. So let them know what you expect. Let them know how many calls they need to be making every single day that you expect them to be touching base with people and cleaning up this database, scheduling appointments, virtual or face-to-face, -face, and don't let that um, go down right now. I still expect my teams to have five appointments every week. I want five first appointments every single week because I know that you are 50% more likely to close the sale when you have an appointment. So, and if they don't have those appointments right now, what are they doing to generate new? Are they reaching out to their realtors? What does that realtor outreach look like? And I've got to tell you, if that realtor outreach is email, cut it out right now. Stop e-blasting realtors in this time. Pick up the phone. Things do work to call out. Call, talk to people. Text message even, if you're dealing with the millennials, a lot of times text messaging. Realtors text them and say, hey, is now a good time to talk? I had an idea I want to share with you. And you'll be amazed how often they'll call you back. So right now, people are looking for those ideas. If you have something exciting, then you can definitely share that. I know we had the question about downsizers from Robin. So I did want to address that here too. So Robin, downsizers don't have to move. That's always been our biggest challenge with downsizers. They, they want to move. They are like our to be built buyers right now as well. They don't have to move right this second and they're holding off and they're particularly holding off if they have a home to sell somewhere like Long Island or, or up in the areas where we, we've been the hardest hit and there's so much uncertainty there that you can still move those people forward. And one of the things that I did with one of my builders was we actually created a peace of mind contingency. So we're no longer taking house to sell or house to close contingencies. However, we are taking what's called a peace of mind contingency. And what we're doing is we, it requires a full deposit. It requires a full contract. And you still have to get mortgage approval if there's a mortgage. If not, you have to have cash validation. Uh, and, the, and we're requiring that they apply with our preferred lender. They can choose whoever they want to go with, but we're requiring them to make application with our preferred lender to make sure that we know we have a real deal there. 
Uh, and we're taking them all the way up through selections, doing a virtual color session. Um, the, the buyer has up to 90 days. If for any reason they lose their income, then they actually get their deposit back. Now we're not going to start the home. We're not going to, you know, go send it to the engineer or order plans or do any of those things or order permits, but we're going to engage that buyer so that as they start to feel more comfortable and release that contingency, we've already gotten all that work done. And now we can just pull the trigger and move like that and be ready to go. So that's something a downsizing buyer would really appreciate right now is knowing that they're not putting things at risk. Can I say something really quick too about sure. that? Can really, um, one of my, one of my builders that I work with, the one, like I said, that they build about 50 homes a year out of Oklahoma. They have an amazing program that, cause I asked her, what are you doing to keep builders calm? And she said, they've always had this trade program where you could trade your house for one of theirs. And the way they have it set up is really interesting and in that they close the, their house on the same day the buyer closes with them. And then they take on that house, they do a little remodel to it and they sell it. Um, for the remodelers out there, if that's something that you could do to help get people into your home, it's an interesting way to get someone to trade your home for theirs. And she said, they've always had the program, but because people are hesitant, because they can't list their homes or nobody's wanting to walk through homes that people live in and there's all sorts of restrictions there, they have a lot of people taking them up on their home trade program, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, one of the things that Robin had mentioned with the whole idea of the, um, the, the downsizing buyer is that she said, she or he, I'm sorry, Robin could be either, <laughs> but said that they're not technologically savvy because, and I think sometimes we think of downsizing buyers as being older and they're looking for a smaller home. But in reality, I'd like to kind of know, I'm a she, she laughed. Okay, great, Robin. I'd like to know, is that an assumption you're making that they're not technologically savvy or they're constantly telling you that? because I'm getting close to that 55 and up community and I'm pretty tech savvy. And my husband's 96 year old grandmother is on Facebook all the time and on her iPad. So I think that we used to use that as an excuse why we didn't implement a lot of these digital tools. And so I wanna challenge you to see if your buyers really are you know, technologically savvy and we can help just like our online sales counselors are educating our site agents on how to use some of these tools they never used before, we can help educate our buyers on how to use these tools to help move them along the process as well. So that's just something I wanted to throw out there, Kimberly. Yeah, my 86-year-old uh, father-in-law is actually, uh, we're getting him on Zoom now, and he's to, he wants to be doing uh, Zoom happy hours with the family. So yeah, that, definitely don't make that, that assumption. I think that's great oh, information. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Janice, thank you so much again for joining yeah. us and talk to us about what's going on at SNA Homes. Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, so SNA Homes, we're a, we're a Pennsylvania home builder. We build um, in both communities and on buyer owned land in central and south central Pennsylvania. Um, right now, Pennsylvania does not consider construction or real estate activities to be essential. Um, so what that means for us is all of our offices are closed, our model homes are closed, um, and we're actually not able to construct homes right now. Um, so our sales team is working remotely, 100% um, from home, as well as myself and our full-time online sales representative. Um, so we, we've had an online sales program since 2011. Uh, our process really hasn't changed. We're still there seven days a week to answer questions through online chat. Um, through phone, text messaging, and, and things like that. Um, but what has changed is our goal, of course, is to set up virtual appointments with, with potential home buyers. And um, we offer our customers a variety of options. It could be a FaceTime appointment, it could be Zoom, or it could just be a simple phone call. So whatever, whatever the person is comfortable with. And the, the screenshot that you're seeing right now, um, that, that's our chat button that comes up. Um, we, the very first thing we did was we wanted to get the word out that um, we are still here to help. If anybody has questions, they can still reach out to us. So we um, designed a landing page for our website that outlines our response to the situation, um, tells people how they can get in contact with us, and also outlines for potential buyers what tools we have available for them to use on our website. 
and you can see um, the static banner at the top of the screen shot here, um, that banner appears on every page on our website and links to that, that landing page. Um, some of the other things that we've done, we've just updated our messaging throughout our website, um, letting people know that the virtual appointments are available. Um, on the next slide, you'll see we ran a Facebook ad um, on the right side there. And this was a retargeting ad that we, um, we, we focused on people who have recently visited our website. Again, just getting that message out there, letting them know that we're here to help um, and, and the different tools that, that are available, we're promoting those. Um, we sent an e-blast out to our database, but it was not your typical corporate e-blast. It was uh, more personalized. We're really trying to only use very personalized messaging right now. Um, so all of those initial things that we did, did generate uh, virtual appointments for us right off the bat, which was great. Um, and my main focus right now as a marketer, of course, is, is just to keep that message out there that we are still there to help. Um, promote our online sales team and our online tools. Um, and of course, keeping pe finding ways to keep people engaged on our website and not only on our website, but also on social media. And like Carol said earlier, I'm, I'm uh, using some new creative tools that I've never used before. Um, you know, coming up with little video snippets, using screen recording software, just, just trying out a lot of new things, um, trying to repurpose the content that, that we already have. And uh, Carol mentioned this earlier, but in the lower left-hand corner right there, um, that was a, a post we did recently. It was a, actually a video clip of our sales rep conducting an online um, virtual appointment using the interactive floor plans that we have online. So our salespeople are really taking advantage of the tools that we do offer on our website, interactive floor plans, interactive site plans. Um, we've got Matterport tours, video walkthroughs. They're, they're using all of those things in their sales presentations. Um, and also, I think it's important to mention social media. Um, I have to thank Carol and, uh, and Mandy at Denim Marketing. They do a great job for us. They're, um, they're really helping us out a lot. We're posting three to four times a week. Um, we're still blogging once a week. We're really, um, you know, again, just getting that, that message out there. Uh, let's see here. And, and follow up. As far as any follow up we do, um, you know, human connection is so important right now. People are, are craving that human connection. So we're, we're trying to personalize all of our messaging in all of our emails. Um, on social media, we're, we're trying to showcase our people, show our faces. Um, and as far as marketing channels, 100% um, of the, the marketing that we do, almost 100% is online. So we have not cut anything. We have adjusted budget in some areas, but we're, we're advertising, um, you know, Google, BDX, Trulia and Zillow, Facebook, we're still keeping all of those ads going, just being very careful with our messaging. Janice, can I ask you a quick question? Because yeah, sure. a couple people in the chat asking, or a couple people in our chat asking what chat you use. If you use live chat or a chat bot, how yeah. long do you keep your chat open? Um, so give us a little, a little insight into that with your own. Sure. Audience. So we have been using live person since 2011 and that's worked out pretty well for us. Um, there are certain pages on our website. Like if somebody goes to the contact us page, that button comes up automatically. Um, typically we let people browse for a little bit before that button comes up and it stays up until the person turns it off and that's on desktop. Um, it does not come up on mobile as much. Mm -hmm. Now, I, just as a quick add-in on that, um, I know that, again, the builder that I was talking about out of Oklahoma that's seen so much success, she's been using live chat for years as well. I, I, I need to check in and I can find out what, what the app is she uses, but um, she said that her chat has been exploding right now. So that yeah. is a quick, simple, and oftentimes free thing you can put on your website. The only thing is you need to make sure you can man it. You need to have someone covering it. And yeah. she said she had seven chats going on. She said it's talk to, thanks. She's on this webinar. It's talk to. And she had seven live chats going on at the same time and ended up setting four appointments off of those seven live chats. So um, chat can be almost nerve wracking at times when it's really crazy. And I have another OSC that has completely turned off her chat because it's crazy right now. And she can't handle all of it with all of her incoming leads. 
that are coming in and the phone calls she's getting. So you also have to look and see if you do have an online sales counselor, do you need to help and give them extra coverage if it's getting this busy for them? Okay, so that's something else to think about. Yeah, and I'll say too, online chat has been very successful for us. We've always gotten really good leads. Um, one thing we did a couple of years back, we before the person can start a chat, we do require them to enter their first name, their last name, and their email address. That way, that information can, can go into our CRM, but it also better qualifies some of those chats. So we're, we're not finding that we're getting overwhelmed, but the, the chats that we get are definitely good quality, and we've gotten several appointments and sales through that over the years. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll talk about is just traffic and sales. Um, to give you some background, our, our governor gave this order on March 20th. And as far as web traffic goes, we were, we were uh, well above 2019 numbers as most builders have been up until that March 20th date. And then we saw a drop in traffic and we stayed relatively flat for about a week and a half. Um, but I've noticed over the last couple of weeks that trend is now going back up, which is great to see. Um, we're, we're getting more leads coming in. We are seeing a lot of online chat activity. The phone is ringing. Um, so that's a, that's a really great sign. Um, lead count has been increasing as well. And, you know, not, your, not what you would typically want to see in April, but we're seeing leads coming in and the quality has been great. So we're setting those virtual appointments with our sales team. Uh, and as far as sales go, um, we hit our March sales goal as a company, which we were really excited about. And in April, so far, we've got a few sales under our belt, um, and we have quite a few people that we're working with in the pipeline. And some of these sales, I should mention, are people who have never met with our sales team, who are newer leads, um, who, who has not, they've not toured one of our homes, but they have been using the, the tools on our website like those virtual tours. So overall, it's uh, here in Pennsylvania, we're staying positive and we're definitely, we're definitely seeing things get better. Uh, and, so, uh, you know, I just want to share with everybody, I just came off of a webinar that Wells Fargo held with our uh, clients, our builder clients, and we had our senior economist on the call, Mark Vintner, and he shared with us, that because you talked about your first quarter and how good it was, uh, you know, the industry, new construction as a whole, had a great first quarter. The, uh, the winter not being as rough as it typically is across the country helped. Uh, in March, overall, new construction was up 12% in the first three months, which actually he talked about that really being a great buffer for what's happened to us with COVID. He said that he is feeling a lot more optimistic based on some of the surveys he's been doing with builders. But he said even with COVID, he believes that we'll only see a 6.6% loss in new construction single family business because of the great first quarter we had. And he thinks that these three months, the second quarter are going to be painful, but he believes we'll come out of it in third quarter and then have big closings in the fourth quarter, bigger than usual. But only if we start them now. So that's the one thing about, about new construction is you have to start it in order to be able to close it. So. Those yes. builders that are turtling up and not doing anything, you know, they're, they're going to pay for this much longer than anybody who's just plowing forward, you know, not recklessly, but plowing forward based on customer demand. So, you know, if you can, if you can start those inventory homes, those quick move in homes, that's what we're seeing moving right now. And just for clarification, Kimberly, he was basing all of that on housing starts. Perfect. So he was using the starts number. Good. Yeah. Okay, so that's all I have. Final thoughts, questions, anything? I know that someone in the chat had asked, um, oh, I can't want to find it. When, is, when, when it's appropriate, could you guys cover as part of the country reopen, do we reopen our storefronts based on government response or social comfort in the area? And I think that's a good question. I mean, for, for me, for what I think is that we've put in all these um, remote options for people and I don't think you should take it away. I think you need to give your buyers options so that you can address them and meet them where they are in their comfort level. 
I agree with you, Leah. I talked to a builder this week uh, who is doing business as usual, just like no COVID. He's just choosing to ignore that COVID happens. He's staffing his models. They're not locking the doors. They're not taking, they're not refusing people or taking one on one. And I'm like, what kind of message does that send to the buyer on their comfort level? Uh, uh, not to mention recklessly endangering your team and putting our and giving our industry a black eye. So, you know, if we want to continue to move forward, we do have a social responsibility uh, that we have to take into consideration. And I think you do have to make people comfortable. We're not, there. there's still discussion about PTSD and people coming out of this being nervous to go out and being nervous to go back to the way things were. So you need to take that into consideration. And it's, it's always about the buyer. When you, when you put that focus on the buyer, you know, and you make your program buyer centric, you're still going to sell homes. You're still going to do really well. Uh, and your buyers are going to be happier as you go through the process. So, you know, I, I think that you have to, I have, think you have to weigh what's going on around you with how you're handling the program. Of course, we're all anxious to get back to wide open models, but that may take us a while to get there. So like Leah said, keep these tools going because buyers are appreciating them. They like it. Uh, I did a presentation at IBS this last year with David Payne uh, from Invent Dev out of uh, Toronto, Canada. And, you know, they do the augmented reality. And when our presentation was about how you can take your sales to the buyer and not wait on until you have a model center. And we had no idea how apropos that would be for this year and what, what would be needed on that. But, you know, it was really very, very uh, eye-opening. And as we went through and we researched all the different things that you could do without having a model center, you almost need all of those tools uh, to, to conduct business today. And I think we need to be, continue to incorporate them. Yeah, um, George, uh, I think it's George Lazoya. Liz I'm sorry if I slaughtered your name. Um, said that uh, three sales for the month came in without stepping foot on property, all new leads. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that's so important. That goes along the lines of what Kylie said about the two that came through, enter now. Um, I think, you know, for anyone who's been hesitant about, is it worth our while to really implement this foundation I was talking about earlier of your marketing, your website, your, your um, CRM, and then eventually adding that person that can handle online sales types leads. It really is going in that direction. And one of the things Kylie told me is they've realized throughout this process that they, they had so many things the buyers did after the sale that they could do virtually, that they don't need to take up so much time. So they're streamlining their processes and making it easier for the buyers by using these same tools they're using on the selling side. So everything we're putting in place now, we can build on and build better processes and procedures moving forward that will really create options for us when unforeseen things like a virus comes along, you know? And, and I think that's some of, the, some of the way forward and the optimism that we can utilize that, that I'm optimistic that all this stuff is gonna need to stay around for other things and be useful going forward. You're not just implementing stuff now that you're gonna toss out the window when we all go back to normal, you know? Any more questions for our panelists? Kelly, you have some final thoughts? Just that, um, you know, it's about optimism. It's a Friday. Let's, let's lean into this weekend with optimism. This is when we sell homes on weekends. This is when we help people get mortgages. So Kimberly, I wrote down what you said earlier. You expect your people to reach five people. Well, this is the weekend to do it. As soon as you hang up this call, start making those sales calls. I know my team does text messages um, where they videotape themselves and then they send that video to our builder clients and our customers. And that has been really working well for us. There are so many different ways to connect. Um, the ideas have been phenomenal on this call. I look forward to the next call. I wanna thank all of our panelists. You ladies are amazing. And I wish you all well and wish all of your families well. Be well, enjoy your weekend. Go sell, sell, sell. Thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye, thank you. Bye y'all.